Our rules are simple, but the challenge is great. No shoulder pets, tames that can be carried, or typical boss dinos allowed. That means no Rexes, Therizinos, or any other dinos people normally use in these fights. Equipped with official server cap saddles, our 19 contenders will be backed by the commanding presence of a loyal Uteranus providing that extra boost. All competitors will go into battle with food to provide a healing effect. Herbivores will have plenty of sweet veggie cakes, and carnivores and omnivores will have cooked meat. I won't be using the Overseer because the movement speed required to get through the tech cave and then chase the Overseer during the fight would shorten our list by a lot. It's important to note that the tames in this series aren't typically used during boss battles because the amount of mutations you need to make them competitive, but all the dinos competing will have around 23,000 health and 1200% melee. This will give them all a fair shot at defeating at least one of the guardians. It won't always be feasible to reach these stats depending on the dinos I'm using, but I will let you know the amount of mutations and levels it took in order to reach it. All competitors start out with 50 base health and melee, and 40 points and everything else before I apply mutations and experience levels. You can decide on your own servers if it's worth pursuing. Competitors are required to fight the Megapithecus, Broodmother, then the Dragon on all difficulties starting with Gamma, then Beta, finishing with Alpha. Their success will be annotated on this scorecard with a pass or fail system. Now let's introduce our competitor and see if they have what it takes. Hyenodon. These skittish pack animals roam the rocky and snowy regions of the Ark and travel in groups up to six. These ferocious little guys get a pack bonus and heal themselves by eating corpses, but come with a very low health pool. So low, in fact, that it took 85 mutations and 70 experience levels to get these stats. 60 mutations and 40 experience levels went into health, and 25 mutations and 30 experience levels went into melee. Let's see what these furry little fellas can do. I popped open the green portal and the hyena hoedown was ready to be unleashed on the ever easy Gamma Megapithecus. At first glance you might think, oh great, another creature that gets ignored by the bosses. But just wait, it gets weird. For the Megapithecus on all difficulties though, he couldn't resist the UD. I would either have to tank or run. I probably should have stood tall and tanked for this fight, it was inevitable for him to lose and hand us our first pass. Heading over to the Gamma Broodmother, I was worried that I'd be running all over the place again while struggling with spiderwebs, but this is where it gets weird. The second I whistled my laughing dogs to attack my target instead of neutral, the Broodmother immediately started to focus on them. Did you think I just figured it out? I sure did. But I didn't. I think it was just one big coincidence because it didn't work with any of the other bosses. I'd have to try to replicate it later, but we'll get back to that because for now, we have another pass for the board. The Gamma Dragon flew in and tried to impress me with a touch and go before landing shortly after. He charged forward and blew fire on my hyenas before aggroing on Commander Utes. I couldn't shake his aggro during this fight, and the whistling technique didn't work, so I guess it's safe to say that it was a coincidence. Commander Utes burned to death, and on the next approach I found myself in a tricky situation. The dragon gained ground quickly and still had the aggro on me instead of the hyena dons. I took a fire breath and two bites while running in to hide under his crotch for safety. He even broke my gloves. Fortunately, the dragon didn't take off again and the crew took him down, earning their third pass. The blue portal was up, which meant it was time to enter our first beta boss arena, the Beta Megapithecus. I tried the whistling technique again here and it didn't change the big man's aggro at all, so it was destined to be another game of keep away. I was able to successfully block his path numerous times and Commander Utes was relatively unscathed towards the end of the fight. The damage output from the Hyena Dons isn't really all that great, so truth be told, I was mildly worried that we wouldn't make it through any of the Alpha fights. Beta Monkey was a breeze though when we get another pass. The Beta Broodmother held her aggro on the Screeching Psychos again, so I decided to kind of hang back and let them work their magic. For every baby spider they kill and eat, they get a little health boost. When I flanked around her backside, not, not, to, not to like get a better look at anything, but to kind of... Yeah, okay, you got me. I took a bite out of some of the Uranios and the Hyenodons shifted their aggro smoothly to help out before navigating back to the Broodmother. I really, really like how easy it is to maneuver the smaller creatures in this game. Maybe I'm just jaded for years of trying to move packs of Rexes around, but either way, stamp another pass on the scorecard. To start off the beta dragon fight, I tried a new strategy, burning to death. I felt like it was inevitable, so just embrace it. My thoughts were simple. The Beta Dragon would murder Commander Utes in cold blood, and I'd fall between his girthy groin where I could deal maximum damage with the sweet sword I brought with me. I survived the first onslaught, and just when I thought things couldn't get any more weird, they got more weird. The dragon was now aggroed onto the hyenas. I didn't whistle or do anything special, so what the hell. I had a theory that it had something to do with distance. This game is plagued with so many weird things. The Gigantopithecus can't attack the dragon, but these short shits can. 
bosses aggroing on things because of drag weight seems to be more like when the programmers remember to code that for the specific mobs because it clearly doesn't happen every time. There's no consistency to any of it. Oh, and here's this weird bug again. A fully fed Commander Yuch just decides to alt F4 life and dies for no reason at all. I slap the big baby in the face for giving up and flank the dragon to make my approach. Not the dumbest thing I've done, trust me, because I clearly could have just hung out by Commander Ute's corpse, but it smelled terrible and I wanted a piece of this jerk. The hyena dons impress once again and earn another pass. I was more confused than I have ever been in this series, but that didn't stop me from firing up the red portal. The Giggle Gang was ready to take on the Alpha Mega Pithkiss in his snowy domain. He was clearly ready for us as well because he was coming in hot. I couldn't shake him. There was literally no chance that I'd be able to play keep away during the alpha fights. The movement speed on these dudes is just so high on this difficulty. I tried to pin him with a little maneuvering, but ultimately I failed and wound up wondering how the hell I could still pull this off. I positioned myself on the outside of the fight with the path to my back, and as soon as Commander Utes was about to die, I bailed. And I wish I had painted my armor prior to this fight, but now's not the time for vanity. Looking back, it was a success. The Alpha Mega Pithecus was aggroed on the Hyenodons. All I had to do was sit back and wait. But not if this little maniac has anything to say about it. I dodged his poo nugget and serpentine my way to splitting his skull open. Then I joined my hyena friends in victory over their first alpha boss. The alpha broodmother is a difficult fight. There's nowhere to hide, there's no running, there's literally nothing you can do except hope that the crew you brought in can do enough damage to pull out the victory before she devours everyone. The hyena dons were able to hold aggro during this fight, but I will say, these guys actually kind of fit under her hitbox. And that's not a good thing because they huddle right around the no-no zone to hit her, which is her mouth. She has a wide cone of damage in front of her, and one of the key principles in fighting the Broodmother is to make sure that you have her surrounded, so that not all of your tames are getting hit when she attacks. That's impossible to do with the Hyena Don, and we have to pay the price for it. There's our first fail on the board. For the Alpha Dragon, I tried another new strategy, running for my life. My theory of distance and aggro would have to be tested a little more, but it seemed to work here. As soon as I got far enough away, the dragon focused on the laughing dogs. They were able to deal a decent chunk of damage before the dragon flew away. I watched from a safe distance and I was able to keep this up for a few of the engagements. In future fights when this occurs with the Megapithecus, I'll have to try something similar. All good things come to an end and they surely did here, as Commander Utes burned to death once again, and I survived by the skin of my teeth, but went to work with my sword. Fortunately, the dragon ripped my pants off, so I was able to do this in style and maximum comfort. Overall, I wouldn't recommend breeding these guys due to how many mutations it took to get here, but they got some game and cleared the Alpha Dragon. That's 12 creatures in the books and many more to explore. You can check out the community tab for a list of completed dinos and what's to come. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to help this community grow. Please feel free to comment below if there's any dinos you'd like to see or if you have any feedback for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.